Hello, welcome back to Black Book Stacks. I'm your host, Hoshonda Sanders. Thank you for joining me again. It's been a minute. I wanted to uh, thank you for your likes, your shares, and your subscribes, and talk to you about one of my favorite short story collections in recent years, The Office of Historical Corrections by Daniel Evans, who also wrote about a decade ago, Before You Suffocate Your Own Full Self. Um, this is actually a collection of um, short stories and the novella is the eponymous uh, novella included. It's named uh, The Office of Historical Corrections. And uh, this comes out November 10th. Um, and uh, no less than Roxane Gay uh, has um, declared it um, genius. Um, actually, Roxane Gay says that Danielle Evans is the finest short story writer working today. I could not agree more. Um, there is a lot to love about this book, even if you traditionally like longer fiction. Um, one of my favorites, so the novella itself is its own masterpiece. And I would say that, um, so I'll start with that. Um, you know, because we're in a time of uh, not only racial reckoning, but also um, thinking about monuments and the Confederacy and the meaning of white supremacy and what it means for it to be embedded into a culture. Um, it is, um, you know, and then, of course, if you look at and think about the 1619 Project and all of the venom that it has um, stirred up um, and the question of... Um, who gets to decide what it means to be American, um, whether or not we should should not be continuing to talk about slavery, all of these things um, that um, are not really up for debate, right? Like whether or not something happened historically is not really the question so much as um, who gets to be centered in a historical narrative. And so in this story, we see, um, you know, really two characters, um, two very different kinds of black women who work for the Office of Historical Corrections and their job essentially is to uh, ensure that history is documented and recorded appropriately. Um, and I won't say too much more about it, except that it is, um, very well done. Uh, it is not meant to be, you know, as novellas aren't, they're not meant to be short stories, but they're not novel length either. Um, and so it is kind of a perfect, um, it's a perfect length for um, the narrative that Danielle tells in it. So it, it is really wonderful. Um, one of my favorite stories uh, along those lines in the collection is a story called Boys Go to Jupiter. It's about kind of a clueless co-ed named Claire who takes a picture of herself in a Confederate flag bikini and then posts it online and is super shocked when, drum roll, people have feelings <laughs> about that. Um, but not only that, you know, there's um, the response um, so called politically correct response of the people around her, um, the people who support her, of course, creeps online who are like, yay, go Confederacy, and um, all that ensues as a result. And so it's a really smart way of thinking about the other perspective, not just um, the perspective of black women who, I might add, are centered in these stories in ways that are not... Um, I want to say they're not typical because I don't think that there is uh, among black writers in particular or writers in general, um, well, no, black writers in particular, I don't think that there is um, this sort of standard way of writing about the things that come to bear on the lives of black women. But I think here what we see is um, that black women can be as sexy, as witty, as biting, as astute, as nerdy, um, as biting as any other woman. Um, and so that I don't think should be an achievement in 2020, but 
um, it's so rare that we see examples of it in fiction that it is. Um, and that's no shade at all meant toward Danielle. It's actually a shade meant toward publishing industry and also readers, right, who don't demand these stories that are more complex and more nuanced. And um, here in, in the book, in this collection, we see a range of Black womanhood. We see someone who's in a Titanic-themed gift shop um, in one of the stories. Um, there's a, a, a character who um, is in the process of losing her mother or, or grieving her mother. And, um, you know, she's like working her way through it the way we all work our way through grief. And she has this sort of situationship, for lack of a better word, uh, with a guy. And, you know, he's trying to be friendly with her. And she's just like, we don't need to be friends. Like, we can do whatever it is that we're doing, but like, don't pretend that you actually care about me in a friendly way because maybe this is all that it is and I'm not sure why that stuck with me but I think it stuck with me because um there isn't the kind of sovereignty or sort of dispassionate you know perspective allotted to black women a lot of times you know we're like uber you know intense or we're like super frivolous or, you know the stereotypes and tropes um, really are these bipolar constructions of um, how we're supposed to perform our femininity and often they miss the mark. Um, and so here it's, it was so, I think, refreshing. And in and of itself, I'm gonna be the, I'm gonna be the nerd who says that this is actually a, a kind of historical correction. The book is its own kind of historical correction in the sense that it generally just reinvents um i think the standard for what how black womanhood should be conveyed um in short story form i mean there are just aren't that many examples of us uh in the canon of short story writing also so that's part of why um i get super excited since short stories are are kind of um my one of my first loves you know poetry was first and then short stories came after um, my thesis was a collection of short stories so i love i love to see it um and i hope that you will too um i hope you pre-order um thanks to riverhead books for sending me a finished copy um in the galley so that i got a chance to take a look beforehand like i said comes out um november 20th sorry november 10th uh i know that um i have already pre-ordered president obama's memoir and um one of my dear friends who i love 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 asked me oh are you reading that one too and i was like i, I think only oprah has an advanced copy of the president's memoir just to be clear and yes i called him the president um so uh anyway uh, if, if by some stroke of like pure luck someone asked me to read an advanced copy of President Obama's memoir, I am I'm so about it. I will drop everything else in my life to do that. But um, I pre-ordered just in case. Uh, and so in any event, you will hear from me, I, I'm pretty sure, before the end of the year about um, President Obama's memoir. The next book that um, I'm hoping to finish soon is Black Futures. Um, by Kimberly Drew and Jenna Wortham. Um, so I will probably be back with that. Uh, and I have a book haul, but I'm gonna do that in another video. So stay tuned, keep reading. Thank you so much for watching, for liking, for subscribing, if you haven't, and I will see you again soon.